We have an engine that is coming off of this truck right now. Um, I went ahead and just ordered one off of Jex because brand new engine means no low oil pressure. So we eliminated the stock block issue that we've been having problems with ordering multiple things. Here's the engine. <laughs> this is my engine. That does work. Well, thank you very much, man. Have a good one. There's a motor here. There just is a motor here now. So we are now the proud owners of a freaking 5.3. <laughs> I guess that's how that works. You order engine, engine arrive on pallet. This is odd. Like, there's just a new motor that's never been abused or... Yeah, that's true. Anything. Literally just fresh. The crate engine is what we've decided we're going to use for the drift car because we don't know what the heck has been going wrong with these lock bottom N 53s I've been having the worst luck with buying bad engines, so this is good. We know for sure this is good. I'm going to go ahead and unbox my first crate engine, so that's pretty cool. Sick. What do we have in here? Gasket kit for an entire engine, which is pretty cool. I ordered this off of Jegs. This is a 480 horsepower 5.3. This thing should be pretty sweet. It's got a lot of nice goodies. Came with a melting oil pump. Sweet. I'm going to see what that is. I have another one. I'm going to see if it's the high pressure, and if it is, then I'm going to use this. If not, I'll use the one I bought. I guess it's time. Dude, this is sick. This is a brand new engine. What the heck? It comes with everything. It looks so freaking good. It's just a brand new motor, isn't what it is now. Ready to go. Trunnion's upgraded. Dang, look how fresh that crankshaft looks. You don't see cranks that look like that all the time. Fresh. Well, I guess we take the engine and we put it up on an engine stand and start putting stuff together. <laughs> Everything on it's clean, everything on it is ready to go. Buying a crate engine is really nice. You don't have to do any work to it, it's pretty easy. I'm gonna go ahead and put some new valve covers on it. I went ahead and ordered these wrinkle black valve covers. It came with some bolt kits and all that stuff to put on. I'm gonna go ahead and slap those guys on real quick and then we will go from there. Look at how clean it is down there. Look at those pistons. Look at those pistons, man. Oh my gosh. This thing looks so freaking good. Here's the reluctor wheel right here. It's a 24 tooth reluctor that they've got on this thing. This is what the crank sensor picks up. So this is how you basically figure out time of an LS engine. The crank sensor goes, oh, it's upside down. The crank sensor goes right here, right in that hole. And it just reads these teeth on this wheel. And that basically tells the car where it is in rotation. So that's how the engine keeps time. But man, see it in an engine that's completely brand new. There's zero miles on this thing. This will be the first miles put on it. This will be the first startup whenever I turn this thing on. So I am big happy about this. This is freaking great. I am so happy at how freaking good this thing looks. Dude, freaking look at it. Oh my gosh, guys. Seeing something that looks brand new is way better than seeing something that put a whole bunch of money into that's old and you don't know if it's gonna work. Now I get to put my money into something that I know for sure is gonna work and hopefully can get us drifting. If it drifts, we did it right. <laughs> we could say we did it right, but it's been way too much money, way too much time, and way too much effort trying to get this car working. So we said, we're gonna go ahead and buy a long block, not worry about it. Jegs, not sponsored. They definitely didn't sponsor this, but the thing freaking is here. So thank you, Jegs. Y'all really hooked it up on that one. And sent a meddling oil pump with it as well. So that's pretty cool. It works. You leave a hoverboard in the bed of your truck while it's been raining for four days straight. Turns on. Alright guys, so since engine three was a no-go, 
We're pulling this thing out. So we've got it pretty much in engine pull out mode. The thing's got camera, look at it. It's tilted so far back, but the motor mounts are off. We have them disconnected right here. Engine is pretty much ready to come out of the car. Everything is off of it. So we're gonna go ahead and pull it out. Went ahead and got a motor lift plate as well. Those things are so useful to have. After the second Harbor Freight engine hoist, we finally have a working engine hoist. We had to get one and it was just so wrong. We had to bring it back and get another one next town over. So let's pull this thing out and get the new one in. Yeah. That's an engine in trans right there. It's an engine in transition actually. Damn, I stand corrected, Poe. Yeah, no, this thing's got the glory. Hold on, you're still gonna have that tranny's gonna hit. As far as it can go. <laughs> oh. Okay, it's out. Sweet. And this is how we play Rocket League. <laughs> this is Rocket League. It's cool to have the bad engine out finally. Now all I gotta do is put the good one in and have a running drift car for way too long, but we're having it again. Drift car things. So this engine is pretty much put together and actually taken down a little bit. So I went ahead and threw the engine lift plate on there. So now we can move the engine around, not have to worry about it slipping or sliding or anything. Look at just how brand new everything in here looks. Let me grab a flashlight. Everything just looks so good. This is, this is just great. This is what zero miles looks like and this thing will freaking rip. Hopefully it has oil pressure whenever we turn it on. And if it does, then we'll be fine. Look at those fresh valve seals inside of there. You can see them mugs. Everything on this thing is completely fresh and completely brand new. This thing makes 480 horsepower from the crate. So it should be making some good power with the intake and exhaust that we've got with it. Maybe somewhere around that 500 horsepower mark if we have Rustin doing his magic on this thing. So let's go ahead, I guess, get the clutch on it because we took the clutch off the other one right here. So this is the old bad 5.3, which for some reason water is leaking out of the head area. So I'm thinking it possibly pushed ahead in all that process of it backfiring and everything in the video. So that might be a thing, but we have the clutch pulled off and ready to go on the new engine as soon as the new engine is over here. So let's put the new engine. Smell the rubber burning already. Fact. So this is where we're gonna put in the pilot bearing. We need to put that in because those usually don't come there. It might be automatic, it might be manual, so they don't put anything in there. Then we'll put the flywheel, the clutch, and the pressure plate on there, torque everything down, make sure it's all Loctited, and we will get this thing ready to go. My finger's too big. It's an issue we all have, but. <laughs> Pilot bearing is in. Well, I guess we have an engine mated to a T56 transmission. So nice built engine, nice built transmission going inside the car, man. It better run this time. I guess we're just gonna go ahead and drop it in. I guess that's the only move, is just drop it in. All right guys, so the new 5.3 is inside the car and I wanna say this thing looks freaking amazing right now. Right now I have all the injectors pulled off there was a whole fiasco making those injector brackets, but we have the entire thing finally done. Now, what we did was unplug the injectors. We're gonna go ahead and turn the engine over, get some oil pressure, and as soon as we see some oil pressure on the oil pump and on the gauge, which hopefully we do, we're gonna plug all the injectors in and turn it on and it should be its first fire. Hopefully everything is done correctly and it should just turn right on in theory. But we don't know how that works. We're about to find out. Hit it. I'm looking for oil pressure right now, so. I'm looking I'll for fuel leaks. I'm scared. Yeah. I'm about to turn it over. Not gonna Hit. start, but I'm turning it over. Hit it. Residual fuel left over. That was the fuel left inside of it. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna do it again. It's not gonna start. It just turned on. I don't even need it for it to turn on. None of the injectors are plugged in. Did you hear that? Yeah, I just got hit by a bug. I just got slapped by a bug. <laughs> Yeah, it might just burn in the excess of It's probably burning what it dropped down. Right. Although it'd be pretty bad if it was leaking past an injector. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. All right, well, 
Oof, this is it, this is it. Turn on. Yeah. It did turn on. Okay, right? Yep. All right, cut it off. I think it oh, might be that's your intake. Not opening either. I think it's your intake. Oh, is it just the induction noise? Maybe. Ready? Yep. All right, cut it off. Cut it off. This bitch turned right on. That's good. Crane engine, baby. It, it did turn right on. Is it leaking anything? Wow. She's not leaking anything. All right, go for it. You got a whip on that thing, bro. So I just found out the intake manifold was like kind of loose. Maybe the sound was coming from there. We're about to find out. Car. A lot of stuff has happened since the last time you saw this. So I've pretty much freshed up a lot of stuff on this thing. It's kind of hard to explain. Let me put down my crescent wrenches. I have this thing really cleaned up. I think I've dialed it into the cleanest form that it's ever been. And I think I want to show y'all pretty much what I've done. So right now, this is a little bit cheesy. I have some zip ties on there because I need to make a bracket that's welded aluminum to right here on the frame. So I'll probably be able to tie that to there and then it'll be clearing this belt right here. With the zip ties, there's no problem. It's not gonna touch, even if I put weight on that or force on that and it doesn't touch the hood whenever the hood closes. That basically starts off with the cold air intake. Then we go to the intake. All this stuff does in fact fit under a Mustang GT hood. So if you wanted to know, AJEK member, a Holly Sniper style intake, pretty much everything other than a high ram would probably fit on this thing that's a lot of clearance right there L lsa will actually fit on this car without having a hood i'm pretty sure which is eventually what i want to do to this car so i eventually want to go lsa but for right now this will work while i'm going na still got the mcleod hydraulic conversion going down there we had to bleed that a few times i went ahead and got some holly 42 pound injectors because those are about good tuning range for about 500 horsepower which we're going to be going for around 500 horsepower if we can maybe even spray it with some silly spray but i don't know this intake might not like that and if it backfires, it might just blow through the intake and we don't want to have that happen. That's not good news. I also wanted to mention that this is an F body water pump, which is a different backspacing. So I had to get these spacers right here. So since that works, the backspacing fits and you can see obviously the belt fits perfectly. The reason why I changed the F body water pump is because the water spout goes out this direction. It goes out 90 degrees sideways instead of going up and out like the old one did because my cold air intake wouldn't have fit. So now I have just two 90 degree lines. So I literally went 90 degrees here and 90 degrees here. Went to the parts store just found two that did 90 degrees cut them up and then got them tied together so this right here is some four inch aluminum pipe this right here is just a four inch 90 degree bend and this is a K&N air filter that I went and got from O'Reilly's with these rail brackets right here those things were a pain in the butt we had to drill those out those are some very very aggressive steel right there it's stainless and that is very hard to drill so you have to get some high speed cobalt drill bits and that works the best but that's the only thing that we were able to get those things drilled out with and it took us forever so after finally getting all the kinks worked out we finally got this thing together we've got everything ready to go we got the radiator fan we've got everything wired up we even have a light bar on there it's an rgb ox beam one so thank you to ox beam they went ahead and sponsored this so we're gonna go ahead and put the bumper on it show you all pretty much what this thing looks like in the meantime let me go ahead and show you all the steering rack that we have we're going to be putting this thing inside the car and that is way better than the one we have in there right now because it's pretty crusty and it's pretty dusty and it's pretty bad so we're gonna take that one out, throw this one in, and then we're gonna take this one and then put it in the blue car. So we have a new rack on the blue car. So we will have a brand new rack, brand new seals, everything ready to go in the drift car where steering really matters. And then on the other car, we'll just have the other rack because it really doesn't matter. It's gonna be a drag car. It's not gonna be steering that much. We're gonna go ahead and get those swapped out. Now the fuel system is a little bit different. So I went ahead and ran the return line straight to the bottom of the regulator. And then I ran the feed line like it was before. 
I have my electronic fuel pressure sensor right here, the low dollar one, and then that runs into the rail, goes to the other side, and then goes to the right here, cut an AN line, and then you have fuel. So this car is actually buttoning up very well. So much so, it's time to take it on the first drive. So let's do it. Dude, what? I'm actually getting in the car. I reached back to grab my seatbelt like a normal seatbelt, but <laughs> I forgot it's a harness in here. Also, I don't know if I mentioned on the video, I put another Corbo seat where Tanner's sitting right now. So we have two racing seats now. It's, it's kind of cool. All right. I can't like this has been so long and it making. just worked it just happened y'all know the struggle I've been through going through all these cars doing all this stuff and it finally worked I drove the car for the first time since a long time and I drove illegally a lot of times before I just been like putting it up the road but like I drove down like an actual lane of traffic today in the car and it did great and it's not even tuned I guess all I needed was a new engine. Apparently the bottom ends were the problem the whole time. And now we finally fixed it. So big happy on that one. Big happy on that one. It's gonna get a lot cooler, a lot, like really soon. Very soon. Oh dude, I can't wait for it. Might have to move her in a minute. I don't even know how to talk. I am so excited. <laughs> I like. There I'm been... sorry. I just wanted to make sure we got home and we got parked, and we are home. We are parked, and this thing is actually doing good. There were no words. Like I was just taking it in the whole time. Like wow. Like I kind of was just enjoying that. Like just driving a car, like a normal car. It's been so long since I've got to do that with like my home car. Um, oh yes. Oh yes. 